Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Poetry Society of New York's annual holiday fundraiser. We are so happy to have you tonight. Happy early holidays. We're here to celebrate poetry and to thank our donors and have a good time. And we've got a great show coming up for you. I can't wait to introduce some of our special guests. You're going to hear from so many voices of poetry in our community. You're going to learn about our new BIPOC advisory committee, Milk Press, our new publishing company. The Poetry Brothel is going to make an appearance. And you're going to hear about our first annual Cat Skills Poetry Camp Out, which was such a hit. But right now, I'd like to jump into this program and show you about what we've been doing throughout the years, and especially this year. Enjoy this video about the Poetry Society of New York. Mieux vaut ne penser rien que ne pas penser de tout. Rien ne sait déjà, rien ne sait déjà beaucoup. On se souvient de rien et puisqu'on oublie tout. Rien ne sait bien de mieux, rien ne sait bien de mieux que tout. Mieux vaut ne penser rien que de penser à vous Ça ne me vaut rien, ça ne me vaut rien de tout Comme si rien n'était, je pense à tout Ces petits rien qui me venaient de vous Si c'était trois fois rien, trois fois rien entre nous Évidemment, ça ne fait pas beaucoup Sans ces petits rien que j'ai mis bout à bout, ces petits rien qui me venaient de vous. Mieux vaut pleurer de rien que de rire de tout. Pleurer pour rien, c'est déjà beaucoup. Mais vous, vous n'avez rien dans le cœur et j'avoue. Je vous envie, je vous en veux beaucoup. Ce sont ces petits rien qui m'en venaient de vous. Les voulez-vous tenez, que voulez-vous? Moi, je ne veux plus rien au monde, plus rien de vous. Pour être à vous, faut être à moitié fou. Oh my, that made my heart beat a little faster, seeing the poetry festival and the typewriter project and typewriter poets and all the great things that we know and love from the Poetry Foundation of New York. Folks, once again, I'm Lucas Hunt. I am your host this evening, and I love the Poetry Foundation of New York so much. It has made my life complete to listen to their poets read and speak while I lounge on the grass and listen to the stars and the birds and the clouds, everything poets do for us. Um, we've got a great show for you tonight. Before I introduce my co-host, I want to let you know we have a silent auction and it's badass. We have a Hudson Valley getaway, three nights, three people, farmhouse. Actually, you could probably do a little bit more than that because it's three bedrooms. I think that's six people. Um, we have also the opportunity for you to print your own poetry chat book thanks to Radix Media and Diana Getch. We also have a village literary tour. Thank you, Mr. Matthew Baker, for six people. You can see where Millet, Poe, Thomas, Lazarus, Kerouac, Lazar Lazarus, Kerouac, that sounds like a nice drink, where all the literary greats haunted the West Village. So check out our silent auction. Um, we've also got a little live auction. I'm going to tell you about that later, but I can't wait to bring on my co-host because she is the doyen. She is uh, the co-founder and the executive director of the Poetry Society of New York, my very special friend, um, Stephanie Berger. Are you out there, Stephanie? I would love to chat about PSNY with you. Hi, Lucas. I'm There's here. You. Hi. 
Oh, it's so nice to see you. Thank you so much for hosting tonight. This, oh, not nothing. You look good, by just the so way. Fun. I love your sparkle. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's the holidays. Happy holidays, everyone out there. Yeah. I'm just so honored and grateful that we get to celebrate together this year. It'll be, it's going to be so much fun. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I know that the Poetry Society has been very busy um, this year. It's been a slow year in the world, of course, but uh, yeah. we've all been very busy in transitioning. And, and I know all the things we've been, been doing. Yeah, we've been so busy. Um, it's kind of crazy be, because we've been pr producing for the past 14 years, primarily live events and experiences. And we've focused on things like intimacy and interactivity. And like, basically, as soon as the pandemic hit, we had to completely reimagine all of our programmings and figure out how to do them online and socially distance. You know, we've produced the Poetry Brothel for the past 14 years, the festival for the past 10. We've brought it to life on Governor's Island every single summer for sometimes 14,000 people. And, you know, the Poetry Brothel, we've traveled all over the world with it. We've, you know, taken our typewriter project to installation across the country to bookstores and libraries and schools. And, and Have you taken so it to Iowa? <laughs> we haven't taken it to Iowa okay, don't yet. Don't go there right now. Um, there's <laughs> something happening, but um, maybe a little later. Hey, I yeah. also know you've, you've had some new initiatives this year um, with Black Lives Matter. You wanted to really um, incorporate diversity, which has already been a big part of PSNY, and you wanted to welcome even more new voices. Um, you formed Absolutely. a BIPOC advisory committee? Yeah, um, I would say, you know, the for me, the biggest uh, thing that I've taken away from 2020 is just kind of finally understanding how important it is to put racial justice literally at the center of what we do. It can't be like a second priority. And so um, I formed a BIPOC commit or I, you know, reached out to several BIPOC members of our community and helped them begin to form this committee. And um, their goal is basically just to, you know, help us take those first steps towards, um, you know, addressing systemic racism, which is something that every organization has to deal with. So if we, we want we our country to heal. <laughs> we need this so. in the arts, we need this in culture, and we need it in our society. And I know that yeah. the Poetry Society uh, of New York is really committed to doing that and engaged with so many members, not only of the New York, community area, but around the country. And so just a perfect organization to incorporate more voices in leadership. Um, I guess that you weren't completely exhausted by everything because you've also started a publishing wing, uh, Milk yeah. Press. Yeah, Milk Press has really um, been flourishing during the pandemic, oddly enough. Um, so we started back in March, a series of virtual workshops, um, which have been some, a weekly kind of regular occurrence and have become a real anchor for a lot of poets in the community. We've held them every every Thursday um, since March. And they're just so beautiful. They're generative. They're they're relaxed. It's about creating new work. It's not about, you know, critiquing necessarily. Um, so those have been wonderful. And we're going to be publishing our uh, first full length collection of oh, poetry, great. finally, pandemic poems. That's and Kate, right? Yeah, that's Kate. Oh, that's wonderful! Kate. And we're gonna we're gonna get to hear more about Kate because she's in the live auction. Um, but before we do that, there's just one other thing I wanted to ask you about before we we meet Kate. Um, me. I went up to the mountains and I met with the co-founder of Poetry Society, Nicholas Adamski, um, and we worked on a couple projects. Not going to talk about that, but we worked on a couple projects. <laughs> and, what did um, you two get up to? And, Go well, ahead. You know, certain things need to happen when you're in the woods. And so um, this was in anticipation for your first ever Catskills Poetry Campout. And That's I heard right. that was smashing in success because you were able to distance socially and everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was something we had planned on launching in 2020 anyways. And we realized that we didn't have to cancel that one because it was by its nature um, outdoors, socially distanced. and. 
um, kind of an intimate event. We had 20 people this year and, you know, next year we hope to double or triple that. So, so yeah, just a regular year, not a lot happening. <laughs> um, but it's beautiful and brilliant to be here with you tonight. And uh, we're going to hear from Nicholas later, but I know right now you've got this really incredible one live auction lot item that you wanted to talk about a live painting and poem with visual artist Greg Emery and poet Kate uh, Ballou. And create this thing live. It's a, a typewriter painting collab inspired yeah. by everyone. Is this true? It's true. So one of the things that helped a lot of PSNY poets um, kind of get through, particularly the early days of the pandemic when we were, you know, really sheltering in place constantly. And um, Kate Ballou started reaching out to a number of PSNY poets in our community and writing collaborative poems with them and reached out to Greg Emery and wrote a collaborative poem painting thing with him. And um, we ended up reaching out to her uh, in, in April about having a collaborative sonic crown writing experience for members, not only of PSNY, but kind of the wider community um, where we all wrote this, this really crazy like 200 person sonic crown. Wow. So yeah, Pandemic Poems is basically about finding ways to collaborate while, you know, locked down. Essentially. That's incredible. And I know the sonnet is the sort of queen and king of poetic forms. So I think that'll be exciting to read when um, pandemic poems come out. Are Kate and um, Greg around? Because I brought my gavel and we could you know, really <laughs> get into it. I'd love to see yeah. what let's bring, Let's welcome Kate and Greg. Okay. Let's bring them in. Hi. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. There's Kate. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, it's so nice Welcome. to see you guys. You too. Miss you. Happy, you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> so, Greg, you got some paint with you? You got a brush? Do you need to borrow anything? What do you need? I think I'm okay. We do need some words. So, words. Kate and I kind of took our inspiration from each other's and some other poets we worked with, uh, Emmy and Jackie. Um, both part of PSNY, and we took things that brought us comfort during the pandemic and just kind of the ups and downs of the last, I don't know, four years since last March. I don't, I don't know. Um, I took color inspiration and Kate took words. Uh, and we created these things together live at the same time, separated by the Zoom and, and made it happen. Kate, so we're someone that thing. Someone, Kevin Devaney has written in the comment, the chats, thunderous applause. Is that the kind of thing you need for your poem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that I needed it, but I <laughs> That's the thing about Kevin Devaney, just brings it. Cool. Ray, the, the chat feature is working, Ray. We see it. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> So um, yeah, we'd so, love for all of you to just put in the chat anything that brought you comfort during the pandemic and help inspire our beautiful artists here. I can't believe you guys are doing this. We're so yeah, just let's, happy. Well, just we happy you're here. We What's definitely need some help. So we're looking for like a handful of words and Kate definitely needs words. Chopping woods, sour cherry pie, sacred they're rage. Out. They're pouring out. There we go. Because I have a big oh, old thing behind me. Dawns and dusks. Are you seeing these, Kate? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All in there. Hey, let's go on with the program and check in with you guys in a little bit, see how the poem is going. Growing herbs is another one. Um, long yeah. walks in the woods, Molly said. Ocean, Shana, quiet. Okay, all right. Ray said quiet. So red wine, butter. All right, this is cooking up. Um, good luck, guys. Thank you. Bye. All right. Mm. So we'll, we'll see you guys later. And Steph, um, I think, you know, we're having a party. Uh, yeah. And we talked about a lot of things. The BIPOC Advisory Committee, Milk Press, Poetry Brothel, um, the Catskills Poetry Camp Out. Uh, do you have, like, I don't know, a video or anything you want to show or share more? Absolutely. No yeah. Um, I think that we should hear from some of the voices behind PSNY. I mean, why should they listen to you or I when why? we could listen to all of the poets? Why should right? they? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Get it straight from the mouth, straight from the source. 
<laughs> okay. So yeah. we, we've got a video here and um, sit back and enjoy. Open that, open that next bottle of wine if you're watching. The Poetry Society of New York is responsible for making poetry a pillar in my life. Not only does this organization strive to financially support artists in every way possible, it also supports artists by literally just inventing opportunity in a way that so many literary organizations don't. The Poetry Brothel has done amazing things for my confidence as a writer and just as an existing human. Um, has done a gorgeous, a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous work in my poems. Um, I see sensuality show up in ways that I had never imagined before. What people understand the Poetry Brothel to be is a literary cabaret slash variety show where poets deal in the private readings. I think what the brothel really is, is a magical unicorn of a literary experience that'll convert any single person into a poetry lover. <laughs> Been incredibly supported by the Poetry Brothel um, is because there are so many talented and incredible performers um, who are of color and PSNY has such a wonderful reach in the community. I would love for uh, the BIPOC committee to really do the recruitment. The Milk virtual workshops have been a special wonder. I taught an Afrofuturism workshop, which was amazing. We did so much futuristic writing and dreaming of how we want to bring ourselves into the future. I went to the poetry camp out this year and it was really everything I didn't even know I needed. Any time in history, I really feel like uh, being in such a beautiful space with like-minded thinkers and artists and writers and poets uh, just was, a, it gave me, it was a tether to my sanity. I found my poetry family. This community has been so transformative for me. I, I would do absolutely anything for this community. So thank you. Thank you so much. Poets, friends, lovers, and so many beautiful voices that inspire us. Poetry puts a telescope up to the world and um, reminds us how small we are. And it magnifies things and shows how big and great emotions are. Um, my amigo, Pablo Meruda, said that poetry gave a voice to the voiceless the silenced, the oppressed. This is a year where poetry can really support us when we need it most, uh, when we're going through things that are inexplicable um, and difficult to even conceive of. Poetry is there to bridge that gap from the known to the unknown. And it really is like a grandma's touch um, to our shoulder. You know, it's there for comfort and also for fury and guidance and power and peace. There's so much in poetry. And again, I want to thank all of our uh, poets and voices that spoke out for us in that video. Ladies and gentlemen, madames and messieurs, he's, they's, she's, loves, everybody out there that we know and love. Uh, it is now come to the part of the program where you can make a contribution and support those programs that Stephanie was talking about, the camp, the brothel, our BIPOC advisory committee, Milk Press, you can make an impact in the lives of people all over who want to experience poetry and need it. And to do that, it is so simple because voila, you can just push this button right here and tap on it and tap and hold for a second. Molly Hartman, thank you for your $75 gift. That's how it goes. What we're going to try to do in the next few minutes is raise as much money as we can to keep the Poetry Society of New York going strong through the winter, the long dark winter, and coming out bright and shining 
next spring with these programs and services. And I'm watching names pop up. Kevin, thank you for your gift. Rupert, there you are, my friend. It's good to see you again. Thank you for your gift. Any amount counts. You can click on that button and make a donation. We're going to call out some levels briefly and then get back to the program just so you know where your dollars are going. And uh, Zachary Fisk, thank you for kicking us off at $1,000. $1,000 is our top level of giving tonight. And I'll let you know what that can do. $1,000 can fund a scholarship in your name for the poetry camp up in the cat skills. It's a good time. It's a great time. It's like going back in time to the 60s. The camp fund a scholarship for anyone who doesn't have the ability to make it up there at $1,000. Also, you can sponsor our next brothel event. If you've never been to our literary cabaret immersive experience, it is life-changing and beautiful. People fall in love and get married there. For $1,000, you can sponsor one brothel. Also at $1,000, you can support two committee member stipends to our new BIPOC advisory committee, what Stephanie talked about being really one of our most important initiatives this year. And also at $1,000, you can print 100 copies of our first book with Mel Press. You see it right over yonder behind my hand, and you'll know, there it is. Ooh, it's big and impressive now. You'll know your impact is felt. Yeah, let's keep that big impact up there. And let's go down to one more level, uh, $500. $500 is gonna support a workshop instructor at our camp. We pay poets. This is part of what we do. We help poetry happen, function, thrive, and we're always paying poets. So $500 supports a poet at camp. It prints 50 copies of our anthology. Um, the brothel's coming out with an anthology. So many great poets have participated there. And you can support 50 copies of our new anthology. Also, a stipend to a committee member in our BIPOC advisory committee. Or sponsor a milk press happening, what Stephanie was talking about earlier as well. So much fun. Hey, I got to call it some names. Alex, thank you for your gift. Jason, thank you for your gift. Nicole, thank you. And Coelty, thank you so much for your gift of $69. I think that's something a cunning linguist would do. Give 69. Way to go. Hey, um, a lot of you fell late into poetry. Some of you came early. Poetry is life changing. We thank all of our donors tonight. Let's do one more level and then get back to the program. You can enter any amount at any time, but $250 feeds a volunteer at camp, pays a poet at the brothel, supports a committee member stipend, and also supports a virtual workshop instructor. So that would be $250. And you can donate any amount at any time. Our real goal tonight is to get everyone to give something. So let's get back to the program and hear some more voices. Um, right now, I get to introduce someone who's very special. You've heard from her a little bit before. Thank you, Amy, for your gift. We appreciate it. Um, Imani Sims, she is our BIPOC committee chair and Bay Area Madam. Uh, Imani, take it away. Hi, everyone. My name is Madam Alchemy or Imani Sims, and I am the chair of the BIPOC committee for PSNY. As a person of color who's been doing the brothel for like six years, it's always such a welcoming environment. Poetry sometimes can be inaccessible to some audiences. And I think the brothel really makes poetry accessible, but also it allows poets who are the least <laughs> well-paid literary artists in the industry to really do and perform and be their work, to really embody their work. And so when audience members say, hey, I want to book a private reading with you, that's really telling the poet how much someone values their work. And so for me personally, the, the brothel really created a beautiful amalgamation of what I dreamt uh, my performance life would look like. And for me, a really pivotal moment in my career. For a really long time, I was on the slam circuit and then I performed at a brothel and realized that this was the kind of sexy, immersive environment that I really wanted my work to thrive in. It, it's been such a wonderful platform for my work. And I think that 
Black, Indigenous, people of color, artists can really benefit from this type of platform. And so we are super excited for the BIPOC committee to really do the tailored programming that we know is possible through PSNY. Audiences know the caliber of events that, you know, PSNY throws. It's such a beautiful platform. And Poetry Society of New York has absolutely given me that platform and I think really supports the BIPOC community. Anyway, um, that's my love affair with uh, Poetry Society New York and my excitement about the future. And I look forward to seeing you lovely soon. Oh, Imani, love her. Thank you so much for being a uh, part of this night, Imani. We love you so much. Hey, Lucas, where you been, honey? <laughs> All good. Um, why don't we check back in with Greg and Kate? I'm very curious about the progress over there. Too. Yeah, I want to see how this is going. Um, Greg and Kate, are you there? Hi. We're here. Oh my goodness. Kate is hard at work. It's like, ah. Wow. We both, we've been talking back and forth a little bit too, because we just live, I mean, we're like neighbors. Brooklyn, oh. the West Side, we're like neighbors. Um, so we've incorporated whiskey, of course, fairy oh. lights, ocean, and some things of our own. But you can also see the painting. I think we uh, have the I, magic of theater. We can see the I painting. I would love to see the painting, the painting personally. Can. Yeah. Painting. Oh, wow. Wait for it. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah. That, this is what the magic looks like, people. This is oh, yeah. art right before your eyes. I did a couple layers while you were busy talking. <laughs> Greg, you're amazing. I'm so happy you're here. Kate, Kate how is it? It's a race to the <laughs> inside. Kate, how do you write a like poem on the spot like this are you gonna be like ready to perform it later is that even possible i think i've got it <laughs> we're there oh, wow. <laughs> all right you're in for a treat i'm excited so um why don't we hear while well, let's let them get back to work why don't we hear from another one of our uh bye kate bye greg bye. why don't we hear from frankie tan um one of our poetry brothel regular performers a really really dear friend and member of our community um frankie is an a poet an aerialist a dancer a movement artist let's hear from frankie wonderful The Poetry Brothel is not a show. The Poetry Brothel is a collaboration between performers and the audience to imagine and create a world in which intimacy and vulnerability are celebrated and playful. Through my work with the brothel, I've been able to create the kind of art that I know could only come from my voice, my story, and my talents. Working with the Poetry Society, I feel as an artist that I've always been encouraged to find what makes my artistry unique and take that as far as I can. I've made multimedia work using dance, aerial, poetry, mediums that I didn't even think I worked in, like sculpture and music. Um, at the Poetry Brothel, it's not just poetry. We see that the world is poetry. The way we live our lives is poetry. The world of articulation and metaphor has no limit. And so all the art that we make becomes poetry and all of it is there to share with you. Thank you, Frankie. I love what you said, the world is poetry and being with the Poetry Society of New York reminds me that poetry is around us all the time. Uh, whenever I go to a, a poetry brothel or the poetry festival or hear a typewriter poet, um, it just clicks and inspires me. And right now, if you can make a donation, you can inspire some more poetry. 
um, with many of our projects, like our camp at $100, you can give a stipend to a camper. And with the brothel, you could support a tech person, door person, um, to keep it fun and safe. Uh, at $100, you can also support the marketing and recruitment fund for our BIPOC advisory committee. Again, this is about changing lives through culture, through poetry, through art, through love. Um, we're rising above differences. Um, at $100 as well, if you can make that donation happen, uh, at least thank you for your gift. Very much appreciate that. Every amount counts tonight, folks. You can fund a workshop fellowship with Milk Press as well. Um, I'll name off a couple more amounts so you know what we can do. $50 goes towards our firewood fund, uh, chaired by Nicholas Adamski. I've chopped wood with him. It's serious. You need to burn wood up there in the winter in the Catskills. And it's just beautiful to sit around the fire um, with other poets and friends. $50 is going to gift a ticket to someone to attend their first poetry brothel. Immersive, interactive, so much fun, cabaret, dancing, aerial. It's just like Moulin Rouge. It really is. Um, so $50 gifts a ticket. Um, it supports a PSNY membership to a BIPOC poet as well, or supports a workshop to two students in need at $50. Kaylee, thank you for your gift as well. Look at it. We are raising much needed funds with your help. So thank you all very much. We have one more level we're gonna shout out, but it's symbolic. $25 would be our level of 100% participation. If you can give any amount, that's great. Just click on the button and everything counts. $25 would be a very beautiful, but we would also take 10, we would also take five, we would take a million. Um, whatever you can give counts. So, hey, thanks again to all of our sponsors. We've got more program. We're going to get back into that right now. Um, and I get to introduce uh, some very special friends of ours. Uh, Avi Steinhardt and his friend Louie made us a nice little video because they fell in love with the Poetry Camp Out as well. So, uh, Avi and Louie, take it away. What's, what's, what's up, Louie? Oh, I was just thinking about when we were back in the Catskills at the Poetry Campout and how much I'm missing it up there. Oh, yeah? I mean, I, I think that people would like to hear about that, right? Especially because there's a fundraiser going on. Oh, yes, please send money. We need it. No, not, it's not for us. It's for the, for the Poetry Society. Oh, yeah, they need it, too. Listen, being out there in the mountains around poets and performing there and things being so beautiful and lending themselves toward beauty, there was something deeply intact about that experience. Don't you think? I, I do. I, I think we had a really good time there. Yeah, we're so grateful for it. And the Poetry Society of New York, they need your support, and we need it too. So you can send us cash. Again, it's not for us. You can please send them cash. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Avi Louie. I just, I love that little monster. I don't know how you guys feel, but um, he's my favorite. So um, I love all of you also. Thank you all so much for being here and for donating. Um, I, I'm i gonna thank a bunch of people right now. I want to thank Rosalind Resnick. Thank you so much for sponsoring tonight's event. Chandra Mukherjee also for sponsoring tonight's event. We're so grateful. Um, we're really grateful for all of our donors um, who donated uh, the items for our, our silent auction, which you shouldn't forget to bid on. Radix Media, Matthew Baker, Diana Getch, Marcia and Matt Bunda, thank you for your Hudson home. Um, ben, Mateo, Lucas, Saki, Imani, Frankie, Avi, 
uh, Lizette Jackie, AK Emmy Jordana, Lauren Shana, Charlie, Kira Ray, Gabriel Bernadette, Ryan. I literally love all of you people so much and I'm, I can't, I can't thank you enough and I can't tell you how happy I am that we get to celebrate the holidays together and just be each other's family. So I love you all. I am grateful and I'm also grateful for Greg and Kate. What do you say we check back in with them? Greg and Kate, are you there? Hi, oh, oh my goodness. Wait, Greg, is that painting finished? It's almost there. Ah, this is like the final moment. Kate, how, how is the poem going? Are you, <laughs> ah, you finished it. I can't believe you did that. I'm so impressed with you. Um, I bet it's, well, I bet it's good too. Um, <laughs> Can we, would you mind performing it for everyone tonight? No. <gasps> Yay. Okay, so the, the words that I've used are quiet, walking in the woods, whiskey, uh, dancing alone, oceans, sacred rage, red wine, and fairy lights were what I got in here. So <laughs> <laughs> this quiet soothes walk bravely off into the woods. Pour whiskey as an offering to the altar of tomorrow. When we wait, we dance alone. We are like waves in a larger ocean. We hold the sacred rage together in this poem. Take the red wine, follow the fairy lights, I'll meet you there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kate. Wow, that was beautiful. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, we have to thank everybody involved because it's just like all of those, pulling from all of those moments. Like when Colty wrote Sacred Rage, I was like, yes. <laughs> it was so great to just have it all put together in such a beautiful way. So thank you. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think some lucky person tonight might get to, you know, own that poem, that very copy in your hands, right? That's sort of, that's how the auction part works. Cool. Greg, how are we doing over there? Can we, can we get a close up on that painting? Are we, oh my goodness. Ah, it is beautiful. So beautiful. Greg, how are you feeling? What was it like to make that while well, this was happening? Golds and oranges with the whiskey, and I pulled the wave of the ocean across at the end. And mm. I might have sprinkled some red wine on it as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> what what artist wouldn't, right? What you just, wouldn't. yeah, <laughs> it's gorgeous. Um, I'm gonna take a better I, picture and, and show you guys too. So. Okay, cool. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Kate. Um, what do you say we welcome back Lucas and auction these these beautiful artworks off? Hi. Let's do it. Let's do it. I have been waiting for this moment for all year to auction off a Greg Emery painting along with a Kate Ballou poem. This collaborative inspiration that was formed tonight that happened live right here with all of your input is priceless, unavailable. Christie's and Sotheby's wanted it. We tore it away from them. And Greg is featured right now at the Porsche building in Miami. That's a very expensive building that they drive cars inside, I think. He's also on over 50 billboards on streets and highways of downtown Miami. Wow. And the poetry that was inspired during this painting tonight uh, was written by Kate, who is our preeminent poet. She's so incredible that she is the first poet to be published by Poetry Society of New York with Melt Press. And her book is called Pandemic Poems. And they are collaborations with others about what's been going on this year. Like I said, it's priceless. And we're going to start it off. Oh, Nick has bid. Where are my manners? Nick, you're on top at 
all you have to do to bid $300 is click and hold right yonder on this button. And bam, Kevin, you are now on top at $300. Thank you very much. All you have to do is click and hold, folks. If you're on your phone, maybe hold a little longer. Greg, you've come in. He likes his own work. I understand that. And uh, Stephanie, now on top at $400. Looking for a $450 bid. Where out there in the internet world, in the interweb, will we get $500? I'm at $450 with Nicholas Adamski on top. I'm going to just drop something here. Greg Emery's pieces sell for $10,000. That's no joke. And he donated this tonight along with Kate. Kate's poems sell for millions of dollars. Now, Greg and Kate have put this together live, listening to us for the Poetry Society, and they're donating all the proceeds. So if you can bid $500, click and hold. Nicholas Adamski currently on top. Stephanie, do you want to come back in? I don't think you want someone like Nicholas to defeat you tonight in this live auction. However, we've also got some other bidders that have quietly stepped to the side. Remember that high school dance when you wanted to ask someone special to dance with you and you, you forgot to? Well, this is the moment where if you do not bid, this painting is gonna dance off and go home with Stephanie. Do I hear one more bid at $550 going once? Do I hear another bid going twice? Oh, Nicholas, I know this is going to look very good above your fireplace. Stephanie, do you have a response to that? Because Nicholas is now on top at $550, and <laughs> we're looking for a $600 bid to take it away. While Stephanie's considering, um, I want to mention we do. Alex, where have you been on my auction? This is a man who has a tactic. Alex sits on the side. He waits for his opponents to exhaust themselves on the field of battle, and he jumps in with a towering $600 bid. Alex, you are now on top. Thank you, sir. Does anyone want to top Alex who has come in like an alpha bidder? I'm looking for $650 or selling to Alex. We also have a silent Nicholas, not to be outbid. Not to be outbid, sir. Thank you for your dexterity with the bid button. We are now, what's going on with this? We are now at 650. Nicholas is on top. Alex, do you bid again, sir? As Shakespeare said, to bid or not to bid, that is the question. Going once at 650, unless I hear lucky 700. Going twice, we are in real time. There is no delay. If you wish to bid, your bid will be received before the hammer falls. Once and twice, selling to Nicholas at 650. Alex, Stephanie, back in at 700. This is how the live auction works. You never know. Round and round it goes. Where it stops, we don't know. Stephanie has bid 700. Alex and Nicholas, you can bid 750. If you're watching this and going, wow, this is out of my league, we also have a silent auction, and there's some great stuff in there. You can scroll to the bottom of the screen, and you'll see we have the, the uh, Hudson Valley Getaway. Wonderful. We have the Literary Tour of the West Village with Matthew Baker. Priceless. And we have one other thing in the silent auction, which I'm not even going to tell you because I'm going to bid on it and steal it away. Uh, Alex, you come in at 750. Thank you, sir. I knew you'd do that. I'm going to wrap this up seriously if no one bids 800 because, Alex, I like the way you bid. Going once, going twice. Do we hear 800? Last chance for romance. And sold it, closed it out. Alex won it. $750. Thank you so much. And that bumps up our fundraising numbers and mm, makes me feel oh so good. Uh, you can make on the right of the screen, you'll see you can make a donation to any of our, um, look at that. We just bumped it up. We're over $2,000 and you throw Alex in there. We're well over 2750 Man, that feels good. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone who showed up tonight. Um, that about does it for me. Um, however, if you wanted to give, once again, you can make a donation right there. Click and hold. Um, we're going to leave that button up throughout the night, but now I really get to introduce a good guy, someone that I love, um, co-founder of the Poetry Society of New York. We've been saving him for last because he's the best. Uh, Nicholas Adamski is going to come up and close out the night. Nicholas, you're on, baby. Well, how wonderful was that? Thank you all so much for uh, your incredible generosity tonight and um, throughout the entire existence of this experiment, this little project that we've been working on. Uh, 
without you, it would be impossible for us to continue to do the work that we've been doing and uh, to continue to have the great honor of being able to be um, warriors for poetry, to be able to bring this kind of um, medicine to our community and communities around the world. So I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for tuning in tonight and for continuing to support us. Um, it's really great. Happy Charlie. holidays! Charlie, 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 what are you doing? Sorry I'm late, I wasn't invited. Yeah, exactly. I don't, we're, I'm just, I'm wrapping up the fundraiser here. I'm just thanking everyone and wishing everyone a happy holidays. What exactly are you doing here? Well, you can't have a holiday fundraiser without the poetry brothel. Oh, Charlie, I don't even know what you're talking Did about. Did someone say office holiday party? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, we're just, we're trying to do something like in earnest and we're, you know, we're just, we had this whole plan tonight and uh, you uh, didn't hear about it uh, very on purpose. So I'm just not sure how you got the Tennessee. link. I'm not sure what's happening here, but oh, Mr. Charlie, since he's been no fun, is there any way we can get rid of him? You know, to go on with the show. Nice. Uh, better. <laughs> Thank you, Lady M. Thank you. Lovely. It's a poetry brothel takeover. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. We're just here to give you a taste of the annual holiday office party that we do. That we know you missed, and we missed you. Ma, I'm Mr. Charlie. This is Lady M. What's up, we first, Lady M? Darlings, lovelies, and all in between. Up next, we have a poet slash movement. It's the word that I just made up, but I'm sure they will appreciate it. They are fiery. They are magical. They are Mars. Please welcome Mars. I try to think of a genie wish, phrased so perfectly that no madness will befall me once I say it. One that speaks such volumes to the state of human spine break, and so elegantly bootlaces it together with the tenderness of my father carrying trees through the door for us to hang the world on. And the bite rushes in. Wind dogs come begging for scraps of my three-year-old heart. I tear off strips from the inside and feed them as carols play in the background. I try to think of a wish which melts so eloquently from me that no loophole tongued from the needlepoint of it will be discovered and turn against me. That instead it will embroider itself around me until I'm home with you. I'm carrying trees. I carry trees and my embroidered sternum blooms a jagged love. Its ivy needlepoint is angel cross-stitch in a hand-sewn soliloquy that you may have touched with your mouth when that ocean spilled out. I try to think of a wish so noble that all the scaffolding that's keeping my face together will self-repair and the cracks around my eyes will fill with once-wept glory and my cheekbones will remember how to hold. I unhinge from the back. I'm carrying trees. I carry trees. If you open me there, and reach your arms in and cradle your head against the inside of my chest, then I will rest. I 
came out as Venus with the blue pearls in my mouth. When they came out, it was like blood warmed to a pink I didn't understand. I tilled the land of you that you didn't know existed until I touched it. They thought that I broke horses until those crumbled bodies shook, grew wings haltingly, breathlessly, and then took off, pawing at the unencumbered sky. He smiles, a violet smile, his satin hat untorn. He is waiting for me to say what I am wanting in the room inside my head. I am crawling to the bed. You don't see me, but I am a blue haze that is beginning. You stretch out your arms instinctively in sleep, weave another flower into me. He is waiting at the door for me to tell him what I wish for. And I'm thinking of a way to phrase it without crashing down this house. Sap leaks from me. She speaks to me. I'm carrying trees. I carry trees. I carry trees. Darlings and lovelies, that was Mars! Woo! Oh my goodness, that was so amazing. Ooh, yes. Hey, we have a special guest appearance. Please welcome from the West Coast, Madam Palula! Hello, madam. Mwah, mwah. Hello, my darlings, my lovelies, Mr. Charlie, Lady M. Madam, do you have anything special for us tonight? Well, I was hoping, you know, given the season, I could give you both a poetry oracle reading. Yes! And here's how it goes. There's this trick where the girl is hogtied and dropped into a glass cage filled with water. And when the lights go out, it's so quiet, you can almost hear her crack the pane. But when the curtain is pulled back, it's as if she never existed. And the magician does not bow when the audience claps. Okay, now you're performing and I'm your assistant. You bellow to the audience, you will make me disappear. You tie my wrists in front, bind my shins, dunk me into the tank and close the curtain and vanish in smoke while I learn how to breathe underwater. All right, you know that trick, right? The one with the tank and the knotted rope around the girl's neck. She pretends to drown, but this time, just this time, the magician saves her with his uh, wand. He yells abracadabra and the glass vanishes. She steps out of the vertical block of liquid, completely dry. How did that feel? Tallulah! <laughs> that poem sounded expensive. It was. Do you have anyone else to introduce? Hello, my darlings. And now we have an incredible guest. It's Dandy. Oh, hello! Dandy. Hello, Madam Tallulah. Thank you so for having me join in tonight. You would know oh. I love the winter solstice. You know, it is my favorite time of year as well. So much giving, so much getting. You know, I especially love the getting. You, I love it when you put it in and you put it out. I love mm -hmm. that about time of year. You know, it really is a good season for giving. Well, you're doing a fundraiser, aren't you? Oh, yes, we are. We're doing this fabulous fundraiser for Poetry Society of New York. And well, you know, Poetry Society of New York, that's excellent, darling. I do so love them. Those are some of the queerest people I airy met. 
It's true. And they give such great platform to artists and poets and musicians. Well, uh, I painted this portrait of you, darling. Is that me? Oh, it looks, it's quite the likeness. I, I I painted it up. Uh, it's a gift for you as a self-portrait of oh, what you would, like. gonna... you would look like as a baboon dressed up as me. Ooh. And that's a fitting image, darling. It's pretty and, fabulous. Uh, I mean, I wonder if we could add that to the auction. You know, many of my friends, you know, they're very rich, but they hate giving. Oh, you know, I knew a guy like that once. I dated him. He was a real miser, had a heart of ice. You're tempting. So cold. Don't yes, be yes. a miser out there. All right, yes. Uh, you're putting me on the spot, darling. I used to be a miser, and then when we were dating, I was quite frugal. Uh, but now I'm quite fruitful, and I'll sing to you about it if you let me. I would love that. I'm Mr. White Christmas. I'm Mr. Snow. I'm Mr. Icicle, I'm Mr. Ten Below. My friends call me Snow Dandy, whatever I touch turns to snow in my clutch. I'm too much. <laughs> oh, I have a chorus line of shirtless houseboys. Thank you, boys. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. My friends call me Snow Dandy. Whatever I touch turns to snow in my clutch. I'm too much. All right, well, it's fine if I say it, but you can't say it. I never want to see a day that's over 40 degrees. I'd rather see it 30, 20, no, 10. Oh, let it freeze. Oh, more glitter, more, more. Ah, Mr. Ah, Mr. Ah, Mr. Ah, Mr. They're all doing a chorus line of kicks. How do all of these houseboys dance like this? My friends call me Snow Dandy. Whatever I touch turns to snow in my clutch. I'm too much. <laughs> too much. Well, I, I, I'm allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say that. Oh, woo, dandy. That was incredible. Oh, Pumpkin so happy. Snuff. It's the Winter Solstice Carnival's uh, uh, a trademark snuff. You can uh, uh, bid on that in the auction. Oh, wasn't that amazing? And now we have a very special guest. Darlings and lovelies, Moonlight!
Dudleys, that was Moonlight! Oh, uh, thank you so much, Lula and Moonlight, for giving us a little West Coast love. Oh, Hi, darlings. Hi. 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 Oh, you two are so lovely. I just couldn't stay away. How are you? I miss you. Mwah. 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 Oh, so I actually just had to pop in for a second because I have a very exciting special guest for us who's here all the way from our London chapter of the Poetry Brothel. I am so excited to introduce Diego Luna. Wait a hey. second. I don't know him. That's not Diego. That no. is not Diego. How did you guys get on my typewriter? What's you're here, and you're and you're dr and the ha and your mouth. Are you having a holiday Christmas party without me? What? Oh my God! <laughs> you know, with friends like you, the guy doesn't need enemies. You know what I mean? Tennessee, I'm so happy you're here, but um, I was actually in the middle of introducing Diego Luna, our dear no, friend, not. who's he's here from London. Too. Well, fine. <laughs> I'll just go photocopy my butt by myself, and you can have your own fun. We're going to have so much fun, Tennessee. We love you. So, Diego Luna, please, everybody. Please welcome Diego Luna. Dear friends, the Poetry Society in New York and of the Poetry Brothel, thank you for all the beauty you have provided for me and so many others in all these times, even in the times of isolation and pandemic. This one is for you, it's from my new album, Whiskey with Angels, which tries to recreate the aesthetics of the wonderful Poetry Brothel in New York. And it talks about innocence, and we shall recover this poetical innocence soon. It's for you guys. When I was a bird. When I was a bird, I used to swoop low. Crumbs of your coffee pot soul. When I was a bird, oh, I thought it was wise to try and discern the smog in your eyes. Then you took me. I fell into your mind It was deep as the well For young lovers lie When I was a bird When I was a bird In a little blue box I put the ruins of my past For my poems and songs When I was a bird I flew to Madrid To hide in the bars From my family sins Then truth came to my With its two ugly brown paws Said fool you can't hide From the cracking inside When I was a bird a bird My beak was shaded and grey I failed to connect with the roots of my blame 
When I was a bird I hid in a bin Where all of your lies They covered my sins And truth came to my door With its true ugly brown paws Said fool you can't hide From the kraken inside When I was a bird When I was a bird When I was a bird <sighs> what's, what's, what's up, Louie? Oh, I was just thinking about when we were back in the Catskills at the Poetry Campout and how much I'm missing it up there. Oh, yeah? I mean, I, I think that people would like to hear about that, right? Especially because there's a fundraiser going on. Oh, yes, please send money. We need it. No, not it's not for us. It's for the, for the Poetry Society. Oh, yeah, they need it, too. Listen, being out there in the mountains around poets and performing there and things being so beautiful and lending themselves toward beauty, there was something deeply intact about that experience. Don't you think? I, I do. I, I think we had a really good time there. Yeah, we're so grateful for it. And... The Poetry Society of New York, they need your support, and we need it too. So you can send us cash. Again, it's not for us. You can please send them cash. <laughs>